Welcome to the news and views of the elders. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, my listening audience from uh, YouTube as well as Facebook. Uh, I'm joined here today with uh, uh, an August cast of people that have a wealth of knowledge. Uh, these are elders uh, and in their own right, they are uh, seasoned men who have an understanding of what we are doing here in the end time. I'd like to introduce them at this time. Uh, we have Zakane Jones, we have Zakane Sauls, Zakane Johnson, and John Zakane Hayslet. Welcome, gentlemen. Shalom. 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 Um, the, the, the News and Views of the Elders is a podcast that stemmed uh, as a result of the end times. Many people have come to us and asked, what are what what should they do? How should they prepare? Uh, things of that nature. So we figured that we would come on and begin to articulate what the Most High has given to us for His people. Uh, at this time, I'm gonna ask: um, Are there anything that anyone want to say before we get to the program? Just we just have a lot of things that that's out in front of us right now. The world is showing so much stuff, but Yasharel, we should know that the Most High has us in mind. We can stay focused and don't have to get uh, all frustrated or get an alarm. Just, just know that He got us in His hand. Hallelujah. Is that the, being scripture, the scripture says that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, and so. Uh, to land back, uh, we've been assigned to pass on knowledge for the uh, for Yasharel in our year. Hallelujah. And I just want, you know, uh, at the outset to let you know that um, the Zakins are scripturally sound, Torah base, and uh, Ruach field. So, uh, with that being said, I'm going to kick this thing off and ask Zakane Sauls if he would like to uh, have maybe 10 minutes to uh, begin to talk about some of the things that's on his heart. Shalom, Mr. Picard, and to the audience that's at large. Uh, basically, all I want to do is the, we we get, gave a, uh, a all together once before we gave an overview of what we saw was coming on us. And so I want to do, just get your minds again refreshed on what uh, we talked about and what's coming. So first, let me, let me start out by doing this. Let me say this. Proverbs 25 and 2 says, It is the glory of Yah to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search out a matter. And then we also find in, in Amos chapter 3 verse 7, says, surely the sovereign Yahuwah will do nothing but reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. So with that in mind, let's, let's look at this. Uh, if you can, if you can remember, if your minds can take you back, let's look at 2017 and what it brought to where we are today. Let's just do a back view, overview, so to speak. 2017, starting out first, if you all can remember, uh, it was the HR 1242 bill that was passed. That that law was passed on May 1st of 2017. However, it went into law on January the 8th of 2018. Then this most notable thing that occurred was on August the 21st of 2017. We're still dealing with 2017. We had the eclipse of 2017 of August 21st. <laughs> then from there, less than about 40 days from there, we had the Revelation 12 sign. That took place on September the 23rd. Then from there, which most people, a majority I would say, that some of you may know, but the majority of us missed. It was October the 31st of 2017. It was the Reformation period. That happens. But I, but now let me just run back and I'm read some scripture and I step out the way. I brought you to 2017, but I don't I want you to bring you back up to some other things. There was the Tetra, or what we call Tetra, or the four blood moon. Mm -hmm. Listen, Mr. Pye. Listen, uh, those uh, at large, I want you all to get this. 
at four blood moons that transpired. The first one took place on April the 15th of 2014. Right behind that was October the 18th of 2014. Then right behind that one, we have another one, April the 14th of 2015. Then another one that hit on September 28th of 2015. Now, if, you, if you're gathering those dates, if you listen to me, I told you the first one was April 15th of 2014. Happened to be Passover. Then I mentioned the next one. October the 8th, 2014. Happened to be Sukkot or Tabernacle in Gathering, whichever one you all prefer. Then again, the next one was April the 4th on 2015, Passover. And then, of course, the last was September 28, 2015 on Sukkot. Now, let me read a couple of scriptures and then I'm done here. I want you all to, to write these down, uh, listen, audience. If you, if you gather Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, and Yah said, Let there be lights in the firmaments of the Shamahim to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, here it is, and seasons, and for days and years. Next one we run to quickly is Daniel. If you go to Daniel, write this down. Daniel chapter number 12, verse 8 and 9. Well, just look at them real quickly. Uh, said, and I heard, but understood not. Then said I, O oh my Adonai, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. All right. Now let's look at Luke chapter number 21. Luke chapter 21. Quickly here. And verse 25. Verse 25 says this. And there shall be signs. Here we get it again. Signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth. Distress of nation. Don't you see these distress of nation today? With perplexity, the sea and the wave roaring. Mm. First Chronicles. Here it is. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Now, and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Yahshua ought to do. The head of them were 200 and their brethren were at their command. Last scripture, then I'm done. And I want to just say one last piece after I read this one last scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. This is Shaul. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. In other words, you should already know this. Because they've already set the stage for us to understand. Now, if you was to go to Genesis chapter 15, verse 13, 14, I'm not going to read it, but if you go there, Genesis 15, 13, 14, you know he said, I've told Abram, know of a surety that your mm -hmm. seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, but I, and they shall afflict them for how long? 400 years. But after which they shall come out with great substance. Now listen to that 400. I'm just going to say this and I'm closing out. Uh, Zach A. Bateman. 400. 400 years. Think of this. The most high said they're coming out at 400. Hmm. What's significant about this? This is just talking. You take 400 and you divide it by 8 or by 50. Either one of them. You want to use 50 or either 8. But I prefer you say use 50. If you use 50 divided by 400, you get 8. He said, so what's important about that? Let me close with this. Yashorel always knew every 50 years it was a jubilee. We got eight jubilees. No wonder he said you coming out because you had to release every man back to his own substance after that jubilee year. All of his kids had to go back. Man, he couldn't leave him to him. He wasn't going to leave empty-handed. I yield right there as I came. Oh, man, I tell you, you know, you, you just stirred up something, man, because, you know, I get to thinking about uh, when uh, Nixon took us off the gold standard. How many years ago was that? 
was that 50 years so uh, 2023 will be a jubilee if if i'm correct so so now we have, i mean this is all prophetic in, in what you are saying uh again the, the the luminaries are in the sky for for a sign and a season and I, i'm telling you there's a bunch of things that are happening here right now you got the revelation 12 sign you know you have you you, you not only you have the revelation 12 sign but you have so many other things that are happening in the luminaries to let us know that prophetically that we are towards uh, the end of the book so uh with that being said uh Zakane johnson what say you concerning uh the prophetic and where we are uh at, in the end times <laughs> shalom everybody um as we continue to land back off of each other and to take you back a little bit to some of the things that has been discussed we heard the uh, requests we heard from the from Yasharel that they wanted to know and understand the end times and though we're not proclaiming that we know exact days but we do know the seasons and we do know the times I want to read a few scriptures to kind of lay the groundwork as we move forward in understanding these last days in Deuteronomy the 29th chapter verse 29 uh, it was Moshe uh, that wrote uh, the secret thing belongs unto Yahuwah our Elohim but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever that we may do all the words uh, of this instruction or Torah uh, and also uh, we heard Zykeen Saul uh, make mention of Proverbs 25 and 2 uh, it is the glory of Elohim to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. And this is where we are. Uh, if we're searching out, all right, we're searching out in Romans 11 chapter verse 33. Oh, the depths of the riches, both the wisdom and the knowledge uh, of the most high. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways are past finding out in jeremiah the 23rd chapter verse 18 for who has stood in the council of yahuwah and have perceived and heard his word who had marked his word and heard it we are in the season my brothers and my sisters we are in the season of the shema we hear it and we have to obey it we hear it we have to execute what the most high is saying i want to read something concerning these last days that the mashiach said in the book of matthew in matthew the 24th chapter uh beginning of verse 8 he said and these are the beginnings of sorrows and they mm -hmm. delivered to be afflicted shall kill you and shall be hated of you a uh, hater of all nations for my name's sake and what we find here in these last days in these last days people are eating and drinking and partying mm. as if nothing going on hear me today hear me today there is a lot that is taking place and what Hasatan has instituted is distraction after distraction after distraction but for Yasharel, for you that are listening to us, if you turn back to the word, turn back to his law, statutes, and his command, you will see that we are in the last day. Uh, we talked about Mystery Babylon in the book of revelation and i got i'm gonna yield in a, you know, just a few minutes because uh i don't want to go over my time in the book of revelation <laughs> hallelujah we just having fun because you know what i found out that learning and gaining knowledge of the most high is not laborious matter of fact it's food for our ruach it feeds our spirit when we receive the words of the most high and most people because uh they are afraid they only are afraid because they're not reading hallelujah mm -hmm. but when you read the words of yahuwah we don't need to be afraid 
we can look at the luminaries. We can look at the stars and the moon and the sun and see that the words of Yahuwah is sure and is true. In the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter, and I believe it's around verse number 18, he says, For Elohim have put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree, agree and give uh, their kingdom unto the uh, beasts until the words of Elohim shall be uh, fulfilled. And you go over to chapter 18, uh, verses 7 through 10. How much, uh, this is uh, in Revelation, the 18th chapter, verse 17. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrows give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and am now a widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahuwah Elohim who judges her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her lament her when they see the smoke of her burning now what am i saying here i'm saying to us even though it seems uh is peaceful now but the scripture said they will say peace peace and sudden destruction this is not fear mongering this is sounding the alarm this is what the wisdom of the elders are doing we're sounding the alarm to prepare your house for an exodus of uh, preparation but it's an uh, exodus of uh, preparing your house preparing your family preparing the mishpaka hallelujah because the mashiach told us as it was in the days of lot as it was in solomon gomorrah as it was it with noah when the flood came they were eating and drinking and they knew not today listen my brothers and sisters don't get caught off guard i yield hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. um you, you know that that's a fascinating it's, it's fascinating just to hear the word of yah and see it uh, play out in front of us uh we see in prophecy in real time and 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 you you absolutely right uh uh Zakane Johnson, uh, this, these are the days when it is as uh, as it was in the days of Noah. Uh, you know, we could sound the alarm, and and uh, many people would take heed, but many will not take heed because it, it, it's really unfathomable to believe that we are in that time. You know, we've been talking about the end time coming, doomsday, and the end time coming for a long time, and uh, and and as a result of that, you know, they done built bunker shell, uh, shelters and, and and everything. Back in the sixties, you remember when they was having those fallout shelters and everything. Here we are in two thousand twenty-three, and we still haven't seen the end of time come. And now, folks have gotten comfortable in thinking that maybe not in our lifetime. But yes, this 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 we are here actually happening. It's happening in real time, right before us. And people are eating and drinking and partying until the flood comes. But I just want to encourage you also, because you know when I read Matthew twenty four, let me let me just land back off of uh, what Zakain uh, started out. It said the disciples came to him privately and asked him to show him uh, the building of the temple. And Jesus said, "See these things. Verily I say unto you, there should not be one left." one stone left upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he sat upon the mount of olives the disciple came to him privately saying tell us these things that will speak and what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world and the mashiach answered and said unto them first of all take heed that you are not deceived for many will come in my name saying i am yeshua and shall deceive many and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet 
for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And we're seeing that playing out all right now, today. Uh, there should be famine, and that is on the horizon. And there will be pestilence. We have already seen the, 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 the vestiges of the pestilence with that CV-19. Um, earthquakes, we listen, we, we, we visiting that right now in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrow. So when we look at what's going on today, uh, many people have come to us and asked us, how do we prepare? How do we prepare for the end of time uh, and for what is to come? They're looking at the collapse of the dollar. Uh, they're looking at the economic collapse and, and, and a re great reset. That's what they're calling it in the, 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 the elites in the World Economic Forum. Talk about the great reset. And so many want to know how do we prepare? So they're looking for the wisdom of the elders to begin to uh give them some recommendations and ideas and we're going to do that but i come here today just to say this i don't care how much you prepare i don't care how much water you have how much food you got if you got solar if you got guns and ammunition if you are not right with the most high yah it matters not i'm gonna read something to you they said that I see I'm a practical man. And 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 when I read the Bible, it says, uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the end. <laughs> and I understand that when I read that account in Genesis 6, it was only Noah and his family that made it out, eight people. Well, if that's the case. I need to know what Noah did. I'm not worried about the crisis. I'm not worried about the situation that's going on in the world today. I want to know what Noah did because Noah survived. So let me read the account. And, 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 and uh, I'm going to have to go to the book of uh, Jubilees to read this account because yes, and yes it's in the Apocrypha some folks subscribe to the Apocrypha some don't but uh, I believe that the Apocrypha is, is still y'all inspired and y'all written and uh, probably should be part of the, the chronicle uh, uh, the, the canonical so in, um, let me go to uh, let me go to Jubilees, the uh, 20th chapter. Jubilees, the 20, no, Jubilees 7, 20, and 21. That's where I'm going to read from. And it reads as follows. And in the 28th of Jubilee, Noah began to enjoy his sons, the ordinances and the commandments, and all the judgments that he knew. Now, this is before way before the Ten Commandments the book of Jubilee said that Noah enjoyed his son well he, he, he impressed upon his sons the ordinances and the commandments and all the judgments that he knew and he exhorted his sons to observe righteousness and to cover their shame of their flesh and to bless their creator and to honor their mother and their father and to love their neighbor and to guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity for owing these things in other words because of these three things came the flood upon the earth namely because of fornication wherein the watchers against the law of their ordinances with whoring after the daughters of men and took themselves wives and all which they chose and they made the beginning of uncleanness it also talks about and they begat sons and nephilim and they were all unlike and and they devoured one another and then they talked about how everyone sold himself to the work of iniquity 
and to shed much blood on the earth and defile the planet. It talked about fornication. If you look at the world today, fornication is basically unnatural sex, which is basically the order of the day. Homosexuality is probably going to be the last day culture. They visited it upon everyone. They said that there was defilement of the women. We see that today. We see a lot of the things that happened in the days of Noah is happening today because there's nothing new under the sun. But Noah kept the commandments. Noah kept the laws and the ordinances of Yah. And he gave them to his sons. And he required his son to practice those things. And this is before the, uh, the, 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 the giving of the commandments on Mount Sinai. So the commandments has been around for a long time, since the beginning of time, it seems like, because we're in Genesis. So if that's the case, if we're going to make it through, if we're going to have any solace, we are going to have to go back to the laws, statutes, and the commandments. We are going to have to keep ourselves clean. We are going to have to make sure that we are honoring our mothers and honoring our fathers. We are going to have to make sure that we stay away from fornication and uncleanliness. Because it doesn't matter how much you store up. If you're not right with the Most High, but then I submit to you, uh, you're going to have a hard time making it in, 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 in this end time. And I'll yield from there. Zakain Jones, what say you? Hallelujah. My goodness. Listen, we got a lot of work to do. You know, so um, I, I'm honored to, to be here today to um, to share these great Zakiniums. Um, as we share on these last time events, uh, we, we have a lot of things to work on. But one thing that we have to understand is the times that we're in and the people that we're dealing with. Um, we are people with a rebellious nature. You know, we, we don't want to follow instructions and orders or whatever it is. We, we don't want to follow it all. So I want to I want to start out by reading some, um, some a few scriptures because I think that, you know, it's important for us <clears throat> as we talk about this, you know, we, we add scriptures to it because, you know, a lot of times we give our opinion, but it's important to know when when the most high, you know, has put us, you know, in a situation where we have to understand who we are. And, and this is who we are as a people. Uh, we've been like that from the beginning and the Most High knows that, but he loves us so much he, that he keeps his promise that he gave to our forefather, Abraham. And so as, as we read the scriptures, you know, uh, the, the first one I want to read, it comes out of, um, out of number, um, Numbers 14, eight and nine. And it reads as follows. If Yahuwah delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Here's a verse. Only rebel not against Yahuwah, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. The defense is departed from them and Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. Sorry, that, that's, that's the first one. And so, so as, the, as the Most High is, you know, is saying to us, hey, you know, don't rebel against, you know, my instructions. And, and as Zach Haynes was saying, one of the things that we have to talk about is getting back to the law, statutes, commands. Because the Most High has a promise for us, but He's calling us back, you know, to what He what He originally had for us, and and so the, the next 
scripture I want to read is out of Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 24. And it says, Ye have been rebellious against Yahuwah from the day that I knew you. I mean, it's like he, he, he's telling us right off, you know, we've been rebellious, you know, so this is the thing that that's gonna, that will keep you, you know, from getting what it is the Most High has, has promised to you. And then we go to another scripture, and I, I just want to read these off. 68, 7. Psalm 68, 7. O Yahuwah, when thou went with us forth before thy people, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Selah. I'm sorry, it's 6. Yahuwah said, said it the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. So the Most High is, is, is letting us know, you know, he's not going to accept the, re, the re rebels, the ones that are going to rebel against him because he has something in store for us. The next scripture that, that I, I will read is out of Isaiah 63.10. And it reads as follows. But they rebelled and vexed his, his Ruach HaKadosh. Therefore, he was turned to the, therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. And so the Most High is letting us know that when you rebel against him, he's your enemy. You know, you're, you're fighting against him. And, and he's saying he wants to love us, but we can't be rebellious. And we do this in, in, in every, that's how we know we're the people. You know, we rebel against what it is the Most High has for us. And then the last one I have is Jeremiah 3.13. Jeremiah 3.13 says, Only acknowledge thine iniquities, that thou hast transgressed against Yahuwah thy Elohim, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, said Yahuwah. I, I, I just think that's an indictment against us as a people that the Most High, you know, is, is saying to us, hey, look it, I want to love you and I, get, I have something for you because you're going, listen, listen, we're in a time that we've never seen before. This is all brand new. This, this time that we have now is brand new. We can go back to the scriptures and see how we handle, how our ancestors handle certain things, but this time is brand new because the times that we're in, you know, uh, things are happening at such a rapid pace. Excuse me, anybody that follows, you know, the different news or whatever, you see different things that happen. You see all the different floods, the earthquakes. You see, you know, different things happening with the weather. You know how hot it's been getting. And, 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 and people are saying, you know, this is, um, you know, global warming, right? Well, you can believe that if you want to, but the most high is answering. The, the elements are answering because if you remember that when, when sin accumulates, the land will spew out, the spew you out and, and the most high. And that's what he's doing right now. He doesn't have to say anything or do anything. He's already made an edict against, you know, those things that are happening because, he, you know, just like with, with Esau, Esau was, was the beginning, Jacob is the end. So now as Esau is going, they have a time, you know, the time that they're coming into the time of the Gentiles is going to come to an end. And it's, it's in that process right now. Now. Zachain, I think it was Zachain Bateman said that he wasn't going to read or one, one of the Zachains said they weren't going to read out of uh, Deuteronomy. You know, they, they, they gave the different things. But let me let me just read something real quick. In, in Deuteronomy is the 28th chapter as we, you know, the one that we everyone recognizes, the 28th chapter. There are some important things in this because I want to lead to something else. In the 28th chapter, in the in the 15th verse, the, so from the first to the 14th verse, the Most High was telling what's going to happen if if you 
o obey him. You know, what, what? here's the things that would happen. But if you notice, from 15 to 68 is a whole lot more than what 1 to 14 is. He says, if you obey me, here's what happens. But if you disobey me, so in the 15th verse, he says, but it shall come to pass. That means something's going to happen. You know, it hasn't happened. It's going to come. It's going to come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right? Listen, there are some things that in Egypt that happen, but not everything. You know, there's some, some things that the Most High was saying to us. Hey, you know, these are the things that I did to Pharaoh, hardening his heart. But what I'm saying to you, if you don't obey my law, statutes, and commands and follow my instructions, all these things are going to come upon you. So I just want to read a few of them, you know, that the Most High, you know, put upon our people. In 28, chapter 28, verse 41, it says, Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Right? Now, those of us know we follow the, the slavery trail and, and all. Listen, when when you go to the to the um to Ghana and you, you get into the um the um, the dungeon, they call it a castle, but we we call it a dungeon where they were shipped out at, right? Can you imagine? You know, you're going in there and the last thing that you hear, the last thing you see is knowing that you're going someplace and you have no idea where you're going, right? And so you, you're going to step. So in verse 41, all thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locusts consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shall come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So the Most High is, is his intent was for us to be the head and not the tail. But because we are rebels, because we, uh, we just don't want to hear what the Most High says, our ancestors did not follow. And so what happened? we ended up getting what it is that was going to happen to our ancestors. So the Most High is saying, look it, I want you to follow my commands because I have a promise for you. I'm going to fulfill the promise, but here are the things that you're going to go through. Then it says on verse 45, 49 and 28, Yahuwah shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. He's going to bring us into a nation that we don't understand the language because of our disobedience. In verse 50, it says, A nation of fierce continent, continents which shall not regard the person, the old, nor shall favor the young. And so, I was talking with my, my wife one day and, and she was saying how they, her family is from Alabama and they used to go down to uh, drive down to Alabama from Ohio. And the thing that bothered them the most that when every time they went down there, they were stopped by the, by the police. And all the police were younger than her father. And what they would say was boy. They called her dad boy, you know, they, so they didn't care what, how old you were or whatever. No matter what age you were, you were considered a boy. They didn't consider you a man, you know what I mean? So, so that's, that's where that scripture there is, is, is leading to. Then it says in verse 45, moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou dest, uh, destroy because thou hearken not unto the voice of Yahuwah thy Elohim. 
to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. In verse 49 it says, Yahuwah shall bring a nation against thee, it talks about from far away. Then in verse 64, and Yahuwah shall scatter thee amongst all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy father has known. And then in verse 68, it says, And Yahuwah shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by way whereof I, I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there shall be sold unto your enemies for bondsmen and bondswomen and no one shall buy you. And that's all because of disobedience. And then this last scripture I want to read is someone else already talked about it, but I'm going to read it because, you know, we we, we are a habitual people and, and we need to see what it says to be reminded. That's why the Most High had it written down and so that we could understand it because we, we forget. You know, we, we continually do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. And that's, they call that insanity anyways. You know, so you can say that we were kind of, kind of insane because we would do the same thing over again and cry out to the Most High and he call us again and he come send a, a, a judge, he send, you know, a savior to us. But this time, this was the longest one. And in verse uh, chapter 15 of Genesis, the 13th and 14th and it says this and he said unto Abram know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them for 400 years and also that nation whom they serve will I judge and afterwards shall they come out with great substance that there is our promise. Most High gave us a promise. And with that promise, he says, you're gonna come out with great substance. And so then I go to this, this verse here. It says, Exodus 12, verses 35 and 36. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed from the Egyptian jewels of silver, jewels of gold and raiment. And Yahuwah gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. They really just took everything that they had. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. So I, you know, it's got to be over a million people that left out of there. You know, when they started with about 70 people going in. I read all that to say this. All as I came spoke about the things that are happening, that we're in, and that are, that's going on. Now, we're not here to argue with anyone, you know, just about what it is that the Most High is sharing with us. And we, we bonded together and, 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 and as a card, we become one because our responsibility as elders is to blow the trumpet and warn the people. We're not running from anything, but we're warning the people because there is a storm coming that we like we've never seen before. And with all the things that are going on, the Most High said to me, he gave me two things to do. He says, find the wealth and a place to go. And so in, in that in itself, we all came together for, for Pesach um, this, this year. And the Most High had us up on a mountain up on that mountain, we started talking about some things. And the Most High was speaking to us as one, as a con, as one. 
And, and the thing that he was speaking to us on is he was revealing to us what is getting ready to happen and what it is that we need to do. Like I said, we're not going to argue with anybody about it. But here's what we're going to do. We don't we don't want blood on our hands for not you know letting people know what's going on. So if you look at what's happening in, in this country, in this country, we have become, you know, a, a, a byword. You know, that's that's what we become. We are children of the most high Yah, and we become a byword. And we know that all the things that are happening, right, is centered and because of us. That's the first thing we got to recognize. This is because you know, there's things that are happening because of us. The Most High, you know, let all these things come about because of us. But He's given us a way out. And and with with the things that we have, you know, I I I was in looking up some different things and how the other people have become rich because of us. All all over the place, they become rich because of us. Um. I have on, on a card here, you know, when, when you talk about in this land, how when the Europeans first came to this land, you know, they came to the land and they the things that they did was atrocious. They're evil people. I mean, they've done some things, but, but like for example, and I'll just give a couple of examples and, and then we'll, we'll move on. But the, the, the Indian land grab, you know, from the start of Europeans, the, the colonization of, of, of America, they begged the British king to destroy the savages at an even faster rate. It wasn't fast enough for them. They wanted to just kill off the people of the land. So this land, was taken in, in with blood, uh, uh, blood being shed on this land. And so, so in, in looking at that, the most I you know, started saying to me that there's no way that we can continue to be in this land because of the blood that was shed on this land because he already has a land for us. But what is he calling us to do? He's calling us to come back to serving him with all that we have. You know, when you look at this this season, it, it just so happened that we started this podcast in this, this fall season, you know, which is one of our most, um, th this is the biggest time for us because, you know, you have young Kapoor, you know, which you, 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 the blowing of the trumpet, gotta blow the trumpet. Why? So that to let you know the king is coming and for what so that now we have to correct ourselves why because there's a wedding feast coming and your name has to be in the, in the book you know so that you can come to the wedding feast for the marriage festival so so the most high is uh, allowing us to come at this time so that we can share with with the mistrakah that this is the time that he wants us to get our lives together, get things right, because there is hope. You know, people are looking at everything now and they're looking at there's no hope. No, we have hope because the Most High has given us a wealth and he's also given us a land. And, and we'll talk about some more things later on, but, but this here is to let you know that we're preparing for those who will be here, you know, you're gonna have to prepare. You know, if, when you think about it, you're gonna have to prepare in the sense that you're gonna have to, you know, gather food. They're doing everything they can to destroy the food. They're doing everything they can to destroy the water system. They're doing everything they can to destroy the, the electric grids and the heat and all the different, the gas and, and transportation. And so now we have to start preparing ourselves. We have to come together and gather 
as one. We have to stop thinking as individuals. We have to start thinking as a nation. You know, we have to start thinking that when in this land, we're always the last ones to get anything. So with all the different people that are coming into this land right now, right? There's nothing left for us because we didn't have anything in the first place. First of all, here's another thing. We don't really have neighborhoods like everybody else because we don't own anything. We are a, an economy of about $1.7 trillion inside of a nation. We're probably the seventh or eighth largest nation inside of a nation that owns nothing. And so the Most High is, 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 is saying to us, he's waking us up. We're in this land and we're waking up. He says, Judah, when you wake up in the land of your captivity, wake your brothers up. That's what we're here to do today. You know, we, we're gonna have more information to share with you, but right now we're here to wake our, our brothers and sisters up because the time is coming for all the things, the times that we were in the church and everything, we talked about prophecy and the, and the different things. We're not gonna be raptured out of here. There, there's not gonna be a rapture. You know, we, we're gonna be here and we're gonna be in this land. And if we're gonna be in the land, then we gotta prepare ourselves. We gotta prepare ourselves because we have to come together and gather as one. There's gonna be some that they don't they don't have anything to come up with. You know, we're gonna have to take care of those that are not able. That's what the most high has called us to do. And that's why it was important to find the wealth and a place to go. Now we have options. We're not bound. And all the things that you see happening now, don't be discouraged. It ain't about us in that sense. This fight ain't with us. See, the Most High is, is calling us to separate ourselves. But there are some that are trying to make us fight against each other. But this is the time that, for us to stick together. If there was any time in, in our, our existence, it's now to stick together. Because the Most High is, is, is calling us. The Ruach is leading us. We don't have a man to follow right now. We have a, a Ruach HaKadosh to follow. He's the one that lives us. He, he, he guides us. The Masiach sent him as a comforter to lead us into all truth. Now, I'm, I'm honored to be in the presence of these Dixarchanian because with the things that they know and the things that we share together, you know, we can count on each other. A lot of people don't have that. You have, you know, different people fighting amongst each other. You know, it, it's not a time to fight. It's, it's a time to come together and share what we have. We can't be in this place where we're, you know, I'm going to hoard up what I have for me because I'm telling you right now, with what's getting ready to come, there are going to be people that you won't even be able to cook food because they smell it and they won't have food and they'll come and knock your door down and take what you have. That's why it's important for us to be together. And, and so be, be, before I end, I want to I want to read another scripture because it's so important to understand the scriptures and the time that we're in and what the Most High is requiring of us right now. In the 12th chapter of, of, of Revelation, right? The, the Most High is showing us something that's getting ready to happen, but he's also showing us what he requires of us. See, because we've been lied to. We've been told that before all this happens, we're gonna be raptured out of here. And you know, and, and we're gonna you know, watch everybody else go through, but, but ain't, there ain't no truth in that. The, in the 12th chapter, the Most High is telling us what's getting ready to happen and what's required of us. 
So in the 12th chapter of Revelation, it says this. In verse 5, it says, the 12th chapter, verse 5. For 42 months, the beast was allowed to mouth its boast and blasphemies and to do whatever it wanted. And it mouthed its blasphemies against Yahuwah, against his name, his heavenly tent, and all those who are sheltered there. It was allowed to make war against the saints and conquer them and given power over every race, people, language, and nation. And all people of the world will worship it. That is everyone, everybody whose name is not, has not been written down since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the sacrificial lamb. Listen to this. If anyone has ears to hear, let him listen. Captivity for those who are destined for captivity. The sword for those who are to die by the sword. This is for us saints. This is why the saints must have consistency and faith. We have to have faith and consistency. This ain't no time to be, you know, being afraid and, and, and not knowing what it is you want to do because you're going to be tested beyond where you've ever been before. We walk by faith and not by sight. But it's about consistency. It's for those who endure to the end. We can't give up now. But we have some things that we want to share. And for those who have ears to hear and want to listen, we want to share it so that you don't lose hope and you know that we follow the Most High and the Most High is covering us, He's guiding us, and He's instructing us. We're not trying to be in competition with anyone. We're not. We're telling you what we believe the Most High is saying to us. And we're going to trust Him by faith because, you know, there's some things that hasn't happened yet, but they're getting ready to happen. And we have a time span. We don't know the time of the hour, but we know the season. When He comes back, this is going to be the time of season that He's going to come back for us. And we have to be ready and be prepared. But in the meantime, we're going to have to endure. And that's what we're here for. You know, with the news and the views of the elders. Listen, we have a lot of years amongst us right here. A whole lot of years. But the thing with this, the Most High is allowing us to use that, 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 that those years that we have to share with those who haven't lived the years that we have because he's coming he's coming soon and we're closer now than ever for his return and I yield hallelujah hallelujah thank you uh, Zakim Jones for um, I mean you, you really uh, summarized everything that uh, we are going through in this day and time uh, your quote, the most high is calling, but the Ruach is leading us. Uh, there are some, we are, I just want to say, we are not preaching doom and gloom here. We are preaching hope. We are talking about hope. There are folks that um, have texted and wanted to know, well, what's next? What do we do? Well, we, we going to give you some basic things that you can do. Um, but the mo most important thing is that you got to get your life right with the Most High first and make sure that you are walking according to his will and purpose for your life. And uh, with that said, uh, are there any comments from the from the other Zakins before as we move forward? Zakin Hayslet? Uh, shalom, shalom everyone. I was 
I had a couple of verses here and I was just kind of um, taking everything in from the Zakim and uh, Zakim Sauls had one of the scriptures that I was thinking of in, in Amos 3 and 7. But then I was uh, looking at Isaiah 45 and 11 and it says, Thus saith Yahuwah, the Holy One of Yasharel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. And when he's given it unto his sons, when he's given it unto Yasharal, it's up to us to ask Abba and command Abba. And um, I, when we were talking about the, the condition of, of everything in the world and, and how we're getting so close, and I think it's just so timely with Terua and then atonement and Sukkot and what's looming out there on the world stage. Uh, it, it, the the, the Teruah is to, is to wake us up. And if we're guided by the Ruach HaKadosh, it says in uh, Yahukanan 1613 that the Ruach HaKadosh is going to guide us into all truth and it's going to show us things to come. Talking about his sons, it's going to show us things to come. So I think this is so relevant what the Zakim is doing now and allowing the Ruach to, to lead us, having the Ruach uh, on the inside, being Ruach led, because it's gonna, it's gonna guide us into, into all truth. And when it comes to, when it comes to the 25th chapter of Matthew, and he talks about the 10 virgins, the, the wise ones, it, it, says, it, it says, go out to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom didn't come into the brides, the, wise virgins had to go out and meet the, the bridegroom and and that's the day we're coming upon we're going to have to go out and meet the meet the bridegroom we got to be prepared we got to prepare ourselves and I think that's what we're doing the wisdom and knowledge that we have to lead the mishpaka and I, I like what was said we're not trying to make you fearful don't be you know afraid we can't operate in fear we can't operate in fear we have to operate in the Ruach and allow the Ruach to, to lead us and guide us, which it, he, Yahusha said, he, he promised it, promised to us that it would. And I, I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. These things must happen in order for prophecy to be fulfilled. But in all of it, he has always provided a way of escape. Um, he said on many occasions, fear not, fear not. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that, you know, a person that is prepared, you know, you might have some concerns, but when things happen and you're prepared, you are better suited to handle what's going to happen than those who are not. And again, he that has an ear, let him hear. And, uh, you know, I, my prayer is that the Most High would take the scales off of Israel's eyes. Would take the scales and, and plug their ears so they may hear what the Ruach is saying. Because there are a lot of people out here saying a lot of things. There are a lot of false prophets. There are a lot of people saying a lot of things. But I tell you, if it's not scripturally sound, you know those those folks are going are, are leading them into a a, a, a quick grave, and uh, the Zakings. We are here today to sound the alarm. We are here today to say that that we are I call it what a bloke a cold blue. It, it's cold blue, and the times are getting short, and we must begin to prepare our people for what is to come. Um, at the, uh, right now, you know, we are looking uh, at at it and as if it's not coming. There are so many people that are that are just oblivious to what's happening here on, uh, in in this day and time, but they don't know how close we are to the end, to the delivering of the end. And you know, it grieves my heart. You know, even in my family, it grieves my heart 
that folks are not preparing themselves spiritually first and then physically as well as, as making sure that they have the substance that they need to sustain themselves for this first onslaught. And, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some of the things that we need to do to prepare, you know, all, it just uh, rudimentarily. But we want to talk about the onslaught that is coming because the storm is coming. And we want to be able to prepare our people to, to withstand that storm. And it's coming soon. We have signs in the skies. You know, the signs in the skies are, are, are they, they, they tell us what is going to happen. He said the luminaries are in the sky to, to let us know what is going to happen. And I believe that, you know, if we read in the signs right, <laughs> then the Revelation 12 sign, uh, I mean, you, you, you look at the, what's going on with the peace accord that's supposed to be happening with Israel and Saudi Arabia for seven years, 2030. I mean, there are, there are many things that's going on that we need to pay attention to. And uh, and I just believe that the Most High for this time and this season has uh, gathered us together to sound the alarm and to be the voice of the Most High for His people at this time. Uh, and, and at this point, I yield. Uh, are there any other comments from the Zakings? Let me just say uh, again, um, that's what it's all about, to share and to sound the alarm. Fear only happens because you don't know. It's mm. really fear is based because of the unknown. This is why it's important for us to direct people right back to his laws, statutes, and his commands. Back to his word. Everything we need, the how to navigate, how to maneuver, how to get through, how to pre prepare, is in Torah. We say we Torah base, but do we read Torah? He said, my people are destroyed. My people are lost because of the lack of knowledge. This is a time uh, if you if you getting all your information from ABC, NBC, Fox mm -hmm. Network, CNN, and and World News, if that is your source of information, you're going to be lost. No, we're not talking about doom and gloom. We're not fear mongering. We are directing. Get back in the book. The Bible, his word, is our roadmap. Everything we need, again, how to navigate is right here. The sign, there's nothing new in the sun. It's, it's repetitive. It's repeating. It's repeating. Uh, I heard Zakeen Hayslip bring up. The, 12, uh, the 10 virgins Five wise Five foolish The five foolish Allow their lamp To run out of oil And let me just say this uh, Concerning the oil They miscalculated The amount of oil that they needed To last them And then at the last hour They tried to borrow some They couldn't get that and while they were gone and, and, and don't miscalculate keep your lamp trimmed and burning keep it full now somebody said we don't operate we operate in hope we operate in hope and I'm going to read something Zykings that uh, in uh, Shaul said in the book of Romans and I know there are people that don't subscribe to Paul and, and uh, you know I'm not going that's not my job to debate and I'm not arguing or, 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 or whatever uh, but I will say Paul understood Torah he was a Torah man his foundation is was Torah in the book of Romans the in the book of Romans the fifth chapter the book of Romans the fifth chapter uh, around verse 4 it says and patience 
experience experience hope and hope make it not a shame because the love or the ahab of elohim is shed abroad shed abroad in our hearts by the set apart ruach which he is given unto us listen we have heard repeatedly this is the time you can have a whole lot of knowledge all right i'm not knocking knowledge i'm not looking i'm not knocking uh if you want to go to school i'm not knocking not none of that but i would say if that's where your hope is only you're a, you're sadly mistaken you're going to need the ruach HaKadosh in this time you're going to need the ruach to lead and to guide you to get you through the maze this is a matrix and 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 just knowledge alone is not going to get you there it won't there's, there's a lot of things that is happening a lot of things that has happened zakin baby you mentioned it about uh what's going on with uh, uh, uh ukraine and the wars and rumors of war with russia we see the bricks we see the de-dollarization this stuff is going to happen and if you're not prepared woe unto them that are at ease hear me brothers and sisters woe unto them that are at ease in zion i'm not preaching or teaching or talking doom no i'm talking about preparedness i came from a military background and one of the things i i was taught is to be prepared you don't know when it's going to strike but when it does are you ready and i leave with that final word zykenia are you ready and i yield hallelujah hallelujah uh any final comments i can solve yes i i just want to uh i, I want to say something to those that are listening and from what I picked up from listening to everyone. I want to start from where Zakim, uh Ronald Jones, he he read from Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse 24, talking where Yahuwah stated that they have been rebellious against Yahuwah ever since the day he knew us. Woo, my. Woo. But I can't leave with that thought in your head because today I had the privilege of sitting there listening to a teaching about the Ketuba. Mm. And when that Ketuba hit, I saw something. I got to remember Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10 saying, I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. With that in mind, let me just read this here before I say anything else. In Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, let me read verse 21, and we'll skip down and read some. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Yashorel had profaned among the heathens, whether they went. Therefore say unto the house of Yashorel, thus said, Eleanor the Elohim, I do not this for your sake, O house of Yashorel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have polluted, which you have profaned among the heathens, whether you went. Here it is. And I will sanctify my great name. See, you took on his name. Mm. As any good husband would do, which you profane among the heathens which you have profaned in the midst of them and the heathen shall know they oh they're going to know this that i am the elanai said yahuwah that elohim when i shall be sanctified in you before their eyes catch this for i will take you out from among the heathen so i can't break me you landed on this it doesn't matter what we put up store up or whatever you better get your relationship right because when you got your relationship right, he said, I will take you from among the heathens and gather you out of all countries. 
Zach King Jones, you said it. When you're rebellious, he gonna leave you in that land. He coming to get rid of you. But when you go back to the law, statute of command, he ain't gonna leave any good husband. If you got your wife left in another foreign land, mm, you're gonna make sure you come get her. Yeah, this is that Ketubah you're talking about. The Most High said he gonna sprinkle us with clean water. He's gonna wash us, he gonna clean us. All this is getting you ready. People, listen, 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 listen. The Zakini was trying to tell us, yes, we got stuff to do, but don't forget, when you're doing all you're getting, make sure your relationship right because the Most High gonna do his part. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming together. He is his elect. Those that have went back to the law, statutes, and command. Oh, when he sent out those angels, he said, first, two things happening. Go bind up that this the wicked first. They talk him. Oh, one of the Zach King said it <laughs> about this rapture. Let me hit the for all y'all that still tiptoeing between the church <laughs> and you want to be there. Let me warn you. Let me give you a warning for your rapture doctrine. Hear, hear me loud and clear. Matthew 24 says, first he sends out his messengers to bind those first those that you want to be caught up taken what well, taken means to be killed let me help you out he's coming to remove everything that's evil in the land first he's coming to re renovate this earth and all that do evil oh he's getting rid of it so you, so for you rapture minded to want to be taken oh you're going to be taken yeah, you really gonna be taken, taken out of here. So I just want to tell y'all this and leave this prepared. It's this, all this that we see, uh, Zach Kane Hastings just mentioned earlier about something. I want to tell you this. You got two options, people. There ain't but two options. It's, it's never been but two. You either serve the most high or you're gonna be the other. But here, this is the two we facing. It's gonna happen. Ain't no if and about it. The only option you got, as Zakane Johnson was mentioning about the wise, Hasten mentioned, and Zakane Johnson talked on it. So here we go. Either you're going to be prepared because it's going to happen, you're going to be prepared when it happened, or it's going to happen and you're going to be unprepared. That's the only option you got to be unprepared or to be prepared. It's up to you. Do you want to be prepared or you want to be caught not prepared? My admonishment to you is let's get prepared. All of us together, we just here to try to help you. As they said earlier, we're not here trying to preach no fear doctrine. It's a preparedness doctrine. You got to get, get yourself ready. All these signs we see in the luminaries. He said, when you see this, do what? What did he tell us to do, Zacchaeus? To look up. Your redemption draws nigh. So let's keep our heads lifted up. I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, any final comments, uh, Zakane uh, Jones? Oh, man. <laughs> Listen. So, Zakane Stalls just, just mentioned something. If y'all know, the 23rd was supposed to have been the great rapture. Yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I ain't laughing at nobody, but I'm just trying to say, right? It says nobody knows the day or the hour, right? So first of all, you can't call the day though. We just know the season, right? And so that's that's past. And so what was just said, because it says his people died from lack of knowledge. And it's not just because you don't know, it's because you don't want to know, right? So, so here we are. We're trying to tell you, we know we're rebellious, but we have a Yah that loves us with an everlasting love. We are the apple of his eye. Even with all of our stench, he still loves us. Now is the time. It's not the time to, to fall back and, you know, to be an adulteress. It's not a time to be a fornicator. It's not a time to be a thief. It's not a time to be a, a murderer. 
This is a time to fall on your face before the Most High because he's coming. And we're just trying to warn everybody that he's coming, but we have hope and hope is what the Most High has given us. And I, I just want to just say something real quick. You know, someone that's in the background, um, dear to my heart was my daughter, Stephanie, uh, who is, <laughs> listen, you, you have a bunch of Zycanes and you know, we, we we're elderly. We we have that elder role, right? <laughs> I I thank the most high Yah for her for her patience. And 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 without her, we wouldn't have had all this, <laughs> you know, put together here. So I just wanna, you know, let that I really appreciate, you know, that's my daughter, and I appreciate her for allowing us and helping us to bring this thing together and as she helps administrate it for us, that we can get this word out. And, and I'm just, you know, what they call happy glad that we have this opportunity to, to share this word with the Mr. Car because we have some great things to look forward to, but it's going to be important for us to stick together as, as one, as a car. And I yield to that. Hallelujah. Any final comments, uh, Zakane Hayslick? No, I don't have any further comments. I, a lot has been said uh, tonight by the Zakim, and I am uh, hoping and praying that we all take it to heart and let the, the Ruach uh, allow the Torah to have free course in our lives. Hallelujah. You know, and, and I just want to say that, uh, you know, Toda for today, uh, Toda for being able to come back on uh, and be a voice uh, to the Mishpachah. In the coming uh, uh, days, in the coming broadcast, we, we're going to uh, be more specific on some certain things uh, in terms of how to prepare, uh, more specific about what's going on in the luminary, more specific about what's happening with the, in, in the global economy, uh, with Brexit, uh, and those type of things. Uh, because the Most High has shown us so much uh, that, you know, I think it's just time for us to release everything that he's showing us. But yes, we would be more specific so you can identify, you can see, it's almost like you could read along uh, as, as things begin to happen. You could see it happen as well. Uh, and I pray that, you know, something was said that would uh, prick your spirit uh, something that was said that would uh, uh, take the scales off of your eyes uh, because we are in the time, we are in this time, this final time. Trust me and believe, y'all, this is happening in our lifetime. These things are happening right before our eyes, whether you want to believe it or not. And what the, the, the uh, wisdom of the Zakings come to do is just to sound the alarm let you know, because you, don't you know, if the Most High has poured into us and we not release it, and something happens to you guys, don't you know your blood is on our hands? We are responsible to do what we are doing today. And so, again, I just hope that something was said that uh, will make you want to go deeper. To make you want to have a deeper relationship with the Most High and to get in His Word. And with that, you know, I yield. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, make sure that you like and share this. Uh, we'll uh, post our, our next broadcast so that you can be prepared. Uh, maybe you might want to have notes or, or have questions. Uh, you could contact us any kind of, uh, uh, I think. No, our, our website is not up yet to to do that. But any any time that you uh, see one of us or you know get in touch with one of us, we'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. So uh, again, thank you for tuning in to the news and views of the elders. And then with that, I bid you farewell. Shalom. <laughs>